there is not a great deal that government, I didn't say the federal government, can do because uh, from the standpoint of, uh, of law and order, this is largely a state and local responsibility. From the standpoint of uh, what goes on on the campus, this becomes largely a matter of college administration responsibility. And uh, unfortunately, I think uh, some college administration has not dealt with this matter too well. I think that they perhaps created an atmosphere of permissiveness that, that has resulted in, in, a, in a climate of violence. I might say that I think the way things have been handled at SMU have uh, really been exemplary. And uh, I just wish there were more Willis Pates around the college campuses of this country. Of course, you know these were all sale cases. Uh, it was an undercover operation stretched over several months. We uh, were real pleased to find that there wasn't any direct affiliation or direct connections with our schools in Garland. We have two large high schools here. We have a junior high school, but we could not find any connection, even from our undercover agents' information that there was any connections or affiliations with this group of uh, traffickers in our schools or with our school students. Now, all of these were uh, out of school, uh, older than the high school graduate. What type of stuff were they pushing? They were pushing most uh, everything. The majority of it was marijuana. However, there was some methadrine, speed, uh, some LSD, they did find some heroin, very small amount, but they were pushing anything that they could get to push. And you said you've been working on this for several months. Exactly how long have you been working on it? We put this thing into effect in uh, September. A lot of Dallas drivers are still working, especially the ones with small companies, in spite of the Teamsters strike in the Northeast and the Midwest. But now also a lot of them are becoming pretty upset over the potential danger of the situation. Drivers returning to Dallas tell of their trucks being hit by rocks, of bottles being thrown at the windshields of the cabs, other kinds of vandalism of this nature. One such incident happened just today in Connecticut to a driver for the truck exchange here in Dallas. Someone unhooked his trailer. It came loose on the highway, damaging the trailer. There were no injuries. I talked with Jack Doyle of the truck exchange about the Teamster strike situation. Do you have any estimate of how much money you've lost because of harassment like this? Well, that I can count just this week, uh, right at $1,000. I mean, for a little man, this is a lot of money. Have you had any actual injuries from anything like this happening? Uh, no, not physically hurt that we know of, that we can, can uh, just a you know, close call like that. And, and yesterday we had one that uh, stopped and somebody apparently pulled the pin on the fifth wheel. He dropped the trailer. To, uh, just harassment. Uh, well, they had the National Guard out in Delaware last week and they were throwing spikes off of bridges and this sort of thing. How much is this affecting the trucking industry around Dallas now? Well, it's, it's affecting it considerably. I mean, you don't... Uh, a lot of the freight isn't coming in from these areas. Uh, freight's piling up here. They can't go back to that area, and certainly it's uh, affecting employment considerably. What can you do about it? That's a good question. <laughs> what can you do about it? Well, yes, I think, uh, of course, the wind, if it died down, I think the course would become much easier, and I think the scores would, of course, become much lower. And uh, if the wind continues to blow, I think uh, it'll take about one or two over par to win. But if it dies down the next two days, I think three or four under would be uh, a good score. What's your best finish on the tour this year so far? Well, I was fortunate enough to win uh, the second tournament we played in in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, the Orange Blossom Classic. And uh, 
the last couple of weeks I've been having problems, so I hope maybe I can overcome uh, that problem this week. Knock out the wind. How has the course been playing otherwise? The course has been playing very well. Um, we are all been quite pleased with the fairways. The fairways are cut close. Um, they are much better shaped than they, than I've ever seen them. And this is my 13th year I've played here. Of course, the greens are always good. Uh, I, they're a little fast, but uh, I like fast greens. So, uh, and they hold well. And this is uh, one of the things that I think the girls enjoy playing here because a lot of courses we play, the greens don't hold. And when a, a girl can throw the ball into the hole, this means for good scoring because they can get it uh, close for birdies. Basic uh, disagreement is this. We feel that when the city uses our facilities that we are living up to the agreement of making no charges beyond expenses that are incurred. But when we use city facilities, we don't believe that it's being administered that way on their part. And what would you like to pay? Well, we feel that uh, tax-supported institutions ought to cooperate and not charge each other beyond actual expenses incurred. We feel this would be fair to all concerned. What do you term actual expenses? When we rent a school building, if we have to hire a custodian to come in and clean the facilities, then we feel that those are the expenses that ought to be paid and nothing beyond that. We all purport to believe in uh, brotherly love, neighborliness, uh, say it whatever way you want to, I'd venture to say they're not, uh, and I don't mean to be picking on you, but I'd say this to any crowd, there are whatever, 100 people here, 200, uh, might find out what really goes on on the wrong side of the tracks. There might be, honestly, some hungry people over there. And we don't change it by saying, of all them characters over there get to work, wouldn't have any trouble. This just is not the truth. We could have our churches with a sincere, dedicated, meaningful effort in finding out what goes on in our own communities. We could have been doing it before Uncle Sam got so involved and in effect forced us to do it. This is allowed to continue. What effect will it have on the war itself? I don't think it will because I don't think that an administration can allow uh, vocal dissenters uh, demonstrating or fomenting violence to influence policy. They don't necessarily represent a majority of viewpoint to begin with. And uh, two, the president has available to him knowledge, intelligence, and information that others don't. And he has to act with some degree of independence. I do think, however, that certainly students have a right to express their viewpoint. They've done so at SMU, and I think they did so in a, in a very fine way. And uh, what I said a moment ago about Willis State, I would like to also say about the student body here that's been tremendously responsible. There are two or three potential dangers. One is uh, uh, refuse, large refuse like automobile bodies and scrap steel, cables and so forth that uh, could be in the river and are in the river uh, where they might be projecting a piece of the metal that could uh, tear the hull. What provisions do you have to guard against these things? Uh, we have uh, underwater applicable tape so that uh, we can make temporary repairs 
even with the hull wet and underwater, until such time as we can uh, haul out and make permanent repairs from the repair kit which is being taken along in our camper. I noticed that your kayak is quite loaded with provisions. Do you plan to replenish along the way? And if so, where do you stop for water and food and what have you? Yes, we sure do. We have provisions aboard for about five days' supply. However, we plan on meeting our escort camper about every second day for reprovisioning with food and supplies. He'll meet us at highway crossings, so we'll stop and he'll uh, resupply our water and fuel and food and any other supplies we may You won't need. be stopping at any grocery stores or service stations along uh, the way? There then. are no grocery stores or service stations within three miles of the river, and I only know one that's that close. Most of them are eight to ten miles away. Second thing. Some say that if major issues such as Vietnam are allowed to be settled in the streets by the mob, that more such issues will be taken into the streets to be settled. Do you agree with this viewpoint? I think it would be unfortunate if people resorting to violence did influence government because it would be an incentive to further violence. Do you feel that uh, President Nixon and Vice President Agnew, in a sense, would, should apologize to the students, as I, it seems they no, might? I don't think any apologies are necessary. I do think that Nixon is now trying to communicate with students and the college president and, uh, and faculty. I think he's doing his best to try to communicate. They're afraid to go into a truck stop. They, they're uh, going along in a lot. A lot out of their way to get back here to stay away from these uh, bad areas and it's uh, I don't know this, this should be something should be done about it. How much has this slowed you down in delivery of merchandise? Uh, oh it, it'll run at least a day two days late it's, uh, by the time you drive a stops and check the areas where he's going and make sure that he doesn't get into a, a place where they're going to tie the truck up and uh, uh, maybe go several hundred miles around or to avoid it or will, will there be a compromise between the school board or the city in this regard? I would hope so. It doesn't appear at the present time that we've solved the problem as yet. Uh, what can we look forward to in the way of a compromise? Well, either they will need to start charging us uh, at cost, or we will need to start charging them a fee commensurate with what they're charging us. Could it be just a, a matter of def different definition of cost? No, it is not a difference of definition. Uh, it's an actual difference in charges. And you feel that you should only be charged for the use of the custodial person, not the right. use of the building as far as electricity and utilities are concerned? That's correct, because that's the way we do with them.
State law requires that the political parties hold their senatorial district conventions today. So they did. Party officials say that these conventions are both important and necessary, but these two qualities don't always make for excitement. For the Republicans of Tarrant County, the major event of note was that they held one of their district conventions in Arlington for the first time. There, at their convention, the 22nd District, GOP candidate for Lieutenant Governor Byron Fullerton was the major speaker, but he only spent about 20 minutes at the convention, all told. In Dallas County, the Republicans of the 16th District perhaps had the most interesting convention, merely for the fact that they attracted about 2,000 people. There, Channel 8's Jean Thomas talked with GOP Dallas County Chairman Tom Crouch. We think that we're on the threshold of a new era in politics, and we think we have the greatest opportunity we've had uh, in the history of the Republican Party in Texas. We have uh, an opportunity to elect a now junior senator to go along with our newest senior senator from the state of Texas, and uh, I think we have an opportunity to elect a governor. I'm confident in Dallas County that we can elect uh, 10 to 13 uh, state representatives, 10 to 12 state representatives, and uh, the prospects are just outstanding. I will say that Dallas has got, we know Dallas has got to carry a big part of the load for the state, and uh, both Eggers and Bush have to carry Dallas by a big margin, so I don't uh, minimize uh, our task. The Democrats of Tarrant County attracted about 300 people to their district conventions. There was very little real dispute as they went about the business of selecting party delegates and officials for the state conventions. The state convention for the Democrats will be in Dallas in September. This was on the minds of the delegates at the party conventions in Dallas, particularly here at the 16th District Convention. Dallas County Democratic Chairman Earl Luna told me that the conventions are important because of long-range control of the party. These conventions uh, elect the delegates to the state convention in September. That state convention is going to write state platform that will govern the Democratic Party for the next two years. It also sets up the machinery that will be in charge of the Democratic Party two years from now in the presidential election year. So these are very important conventions. So, in a real sense, the political parties are starting their serious work towards the election not only this November, but the election of November two years from now. This is T.O. Salon. There is no better place in the world to buy the things you don't need than at a flea market. The 12th annual White Elephant Sale in the Cow Barn at the State Fairgrounds may even have some of the things you threw out last year. But whatever it is, people come, they look, and they buy.
The products of Americana are everywhere at this event. If for no other reason, it's a nice way to spend an afternoon. It's also a chance to buy something for Mother's Day or something you spent a lifetime looking for. Bill DeVinney for Channel 8 News at the State Fairgrounds. Walter Ruther was and is and now has died. He is the greatest labor leader that ever was in the United States of America. He believed in the people and he fought for the people. Well, his last dying day, which I guess was yesterday, he fought for the little people. And it hurt me more than you'll ever know. Walter Ruther, God rest his soul, is the best man that labor in this country ever knew. What will happen to the United Auto Workers now? Well, we're going to get stronger. I'll tell you. We're going to get stronger. All of us are going to pull together and we're going to pick out a man that will carry on in Walter Ruther's tradition. I think they're good. Uh, in fact, I, I'll even go a step farther and predict that they're good in essentially the form that the bill is in now. A great deal of credit goes to a lot of people uh, on the Ways and Means Committee for in uh, in the, in the House side for moving that bill in and refining it and putting it in the shape that it's in. Retain the basic concepts we had to extend uh, payments to the working poor, puts in the strong work requirements, it provides for family stability concept, provides for equality among the states. We feel that between the states, we feel that, uh, you know, the people on the Ways and Means, including Wilbur Mills, uh, Congressman Bush, Congressman Burleson from Texas, we're both sitting on that committee, did an excellent job in refining that bill, and we would hope that after this initial dialogue is over with in the Senate, and that they focus in on what the bill really does, that it will also pass out of that House and become law. What effect does uh, the Cambodian situation have on uh, welfare as a whole? I don't think it has any direct relationship uh, at all. Well, I think musicians as a whole are getting better. Just like uh, we're talking about country music, well, I think one of the reasons that uh, the whole world is accepting it more is that the music has improved. The songs are better, the arrangements are better, the recording and everything is better, and I think that makes it more uh, pleasing to uh, the average American, especially someone that didn't like it before. So that's true in our music. I think the only danger is that we're liable to lose country music if we go too far uptown, and uh, I think we should always be aware of that. Mr. Atkins, you were saying that music is getting better, and yet you were afraid that country and western music might be lost. Do you mean that by that that country and western music as it was known was bad? No, I don't. I just mean that the, uh, the lyrics 
and the maladies and the chord structure and everything has improved to where, uh, and the song ideas and everything to where uh, someone in New York, also I think television has had a lot to do with it because uh, people in New York, Chicago now, they know more about Southern people because they see television, they see the news all the time and all that, and I think when you're saying about picking cotton or driving a truck or something, they know more of what you're singing about than they did uh, a few years ago.